Hello everyone, welcome to this amazing, beautiful Monday morning here on our Facebook and Instagram Live. I hope everyone's having a great, wonderful, blessed day today. I hope your weekend went really good as well. Um, hope you were able to watch maybe some good movies, uh, good documentaries, or just spend time with family and friends. That's what's really important is being a part of something uh, greater than yourself. Amen. And so I'm excited to be able to be with you guys today. And today we're going to talk about uh, creating peace. You know, as you guys know, for the book of um, of May, can't believe we're already in May. Can you believe it? We actually have the new book, which is called Creating an Atmosphere of Peace. It's a really good, thick sized book. Um, in fact, many of you have already read some of it, like you've read a couple of pages or a chapter, and you've already commented back and said, man, Jeremy, this is really good. It's changed my life. You know, the points you gave helped me out and to restructure my life. And so, so thank you for that. I'm really glad to hear that from each one of you. And plus, also, I'm really thrilled to know that each one of you are really wanting something better within your life. You know, I think we all go through times and seasons of our lives where, you know, sometimes we have those lull moments, you know, whether it was COVID or maybe, you know, you go through that just sort of season, that blah season. You know, maybe your boyfriend broke up with you, your girlfriend broke up with you, maybe you divorced, maybe your kid, maybe you're an empty nester, your kids are already away from college, you know, at college, and you're like, you know, I don't want to do with myself anymore, you know. And sometimes it's hard hard when you just sort of get in those moments, you know, that lull moment of just really wondering, um, knowing exactly what to do, you know, like, you know, here's a fresh new start for me, but I don't know maybe how to uh, have that freshness. And so, you know, I want to be able to help create that for you guys today. And by the way, also, for many of you who just ask, um, it's all over the website. <laughs> Use our brand new book is on the homepage of the website. But good good news is you can go to the top of uh, the uh, Instagram page, and it's what we call the quickie link, uh, and you can just click on that, and it's the very first link. So the moment you click on it, it's the very first link right there, and you can click on to order the book or the ebook as well. Those of you on Facebook, you can also uh, go to where it says shop uh, at uh, Identity Network, you know, shop our store. You can click on the shop our store uh, and go to the uh, to the um, website. And once again, let me also say this to everybody. Anytime we ever have a new product, okay, if I'm talking about my new product, unless it's pre-recorded, if, if I am, it's always, 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 you're always, you know, safe if you just go straight to the website as well, because it's always going to be on the front page of the website in the column or the category in which it's in, right? That's self-explanatory for like books or teaching CDs, whatever. But for those of you who are watching me live, it's great to have the quickie link, as I call it, on Instagram. You can go at the top and just click on it right then, and you can go ahead and get it. So definitely get this book today. It's really good. You guys would definitely love it and uh, really enjoy a lot of it. So today we're going to talk about creating peace. Now, within the book, Creating an Atmosphere of Peace, I'm going to give you a little bit more of a chapter titles to help you guys out. Then we're going to get into our teaching because this book has really so really good. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so some of the titles in here is the creation. Now, the reason why I like to use creation in several of my books, but maybe say it differently, especially within this one, is because you have to remember if you don't feel as if you are um, accredited, for lack of better words, by God in the sense of, you know, being a co-creator, understanding the concept of being able to get into your life and help create your life without feeling like you're on autopilot and like, oh, God runs my life, God does everything for me, you know, he's, you know, and, and, just, and, and not be that sort of religious person, but understand the concept of the kingdom of being sons and daughters of God, joint heirs, joining in to co-create your life. You know, when God asks us a lot of times, you know, I have people ask me who will say, they Things such as, you know, well, do I need to, you know, go to this restaurant? You know, do I need to, you know, ask her out on a date? You know, or I just want to find the one. I always say, first and foremost, number one, you disrespect yourself. Don't dishonor yourself by asking those type of questions. We won't say silly. We'll just say questions to the Lord only because of the fact you don't want to dishonor yourself on that place of disrespecting because you feel that you're incompetent or that you can't make a good decision. You know, and then I hear people say, well, you know, I want to, I want the peace of God in my life. Life, but I want to make the right decision. Let me tell you something. That's pride. Listen to me closely, please. All that is in me. That is pride. The Bible says the righteous will fall seven times and the Lord shall deliver them out of them all, which basically means you're going to fall. God is already predestined for you to fall. And every time you fall, you know, six, seven times, whatever, God will deliver you because he's going to see what you've learned from that. We don't learn through the, through the good times. You learn through the school of hard knocks. We learn through our fall. So if we think God is going to deliver us from the fall, we've got, we've got another thing coming because that's not biblical. But God, will shift us into the place. Well, he, let me put it this way. He'll deliver you from the fall. He just won't cause you not to fall. 
All right, because the, the because we have to understand that God gives us these awakening times and moments that actually can birth forth a season of of hail or peace. And so when we fall, God actually will say, look, you're going to fall, but it's but it's how, it's your attitude of how you get back up through me that's going to determine your future, your outcome. It's going to determine exactly what's going to happen to you, uh, you know, your learning curve. You know, if you sit here and say, the devil, the devil, the devil, all the time, you're never learning, and you're going to keep on blaming the devil, and you're going to keep on falling over and over again. Because, because you don't want to be like Adam and blame people. Pride says this. Pride says, I don't want anybody to see anyone to see me fall, because therefore I, I don't want to do it. I don't want to tell anyone everything anything is wrong. I don't want anything that you know happen bad. I don't want to date around because maybe that might make me look incompetent. So I want to make sure I get the one, the date, the girl, the job. And God's looking at you thinking, that's not scriptural. That's not the kingdom. That's not how the kingdom operates at all. And so remember, pride always wants us to look good and not waste our time. When we deal with the kingdom of God, I don't know who this is for, but this is for somebody today. When you look at your life and you say, I don't want to waste time in my life or waste time in God, here's the key thing you have to understand is God, God doesn't look at life as wasting time. God looks at life as life. I want you to think about that. God looks at life as life. He died to give me life and life more abundantly. He didn't die to give me correctness. He didn't God die to give me just everything being positive. He didn't die to give me perfection. He didn't die to say, you know, um, I'm going to die to where you'll never make a mistake or you'll never waste your time again. No, life includes the good, the bad, the ugly. Life includes a death and life includes uh, a, a, a um uh, being alive. So understanding that, a uh, birthing I should say. So understanding that if you look at your life and say, oh I'm just wasting time because I'm not doing what God wants me to do, then you're looking at your life all wrong. Looking at your life means that whatever it is right now I'm doing, if I'm awakening, if I'm producing, if I'm in my j moment of joy, that's not wasting life, that's disrespecting your life. If you feel as if that, that if you're not doing something that you feel is deemable by God, then, then you've got your, then theo your theology is messed up. The key thing is the righteous will fall seven times. You're going to fall. But God will deliver them out of them all. The Bible says thy, thy word is a lamp into your feet. It doesn't mean you're not going to walk. It doesn't mean you're not going to have a journey. It means that light's going to be there. If I, if I have uh, headlights on my car, which I do, praise God for that, and if I'm driving at nighttime, I'm trusting 25 feet uh, 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 in what's in front of me. That's really scary if you think about it because if it's pitch black outside and I'm going 65 miles an hour, which I do tend to put my foot to the pedal, uh, you know, and, and yet I'm going 65 miles an hour, pitch black, but yet my lights are bright, I still can't see what's ahead of me. I'm trusting the only 25% of the light that I can see. But you know what God says? He says, that's life. Trust what you can see, and what you can't see, just keep on trucking it. And understanding the concept that if I'm on a road, let's say, going to a destination, I can look at life two ways. I can say, man, I have 10 miles of nothing, this, this stretch of, my, uh, of road that has nothing on until I get to my aunt's house, my mother's house, my, my job, whatever. And if I look at that and I say, man, I'm just wasting time on this road, I should, you know, if I'm looking at life that way, then I'm missing the journey. I'm missing the journey that I could be loving by listening to music, you know, enjoying my now moments, praying, spending time with the Lord, just enjoying me in the car. Because my life is never about I'm wasting time. That's religious. Religious people say, oh, I don't want to waste my time in Jesus. I don't want about to say, if you're living life and you're enjoying the victory and the joy and you're producing that persona of peace around you, you're not wasting life, my friend. You're not. He died to give you the very thing you're trying to say is a waste of time. He died to give you something that you feel if it's not productive and shifting and moving, then, then you feel as if that it's wasting time. The key thing is God does want you to date around. God does want you to, to enjoy different, different, different jobs until you find the right one. God does want you to go on different roads until you, find the, the, until you get to the destination. God wants these things for you. If not, then you, then you are looking at your life in a very bad, distorted way, and you'll never enjoy your life. And if you think you're going you're gonna to enjoy, can't wait to get to the destiny, can't wait to get to my destiny, then you're missing all these years, and, and, and really, here's what's happening. The devil's going, that's right, you keep on believing that, because one day you're going to reach that destiny, but right now you're not, so live miserable, live unhappy, well, look for that destiny. 
the enemy would love nothing more than you to begin to project yourself into, can't wait to get the destiny of God. I'm in the destiny of God right now. I'm in eternity right now. Eternity is not a futuristic thing. The original language never says it was. Religious people made it, made it so. Remember this. Religious people made the word eternity in the hereafter. Religious people did. That's not biblical, nor is it the original language. The original language for eternity is now. Eternity is what we always live in. From billions of years ago to billions of years from now, this is eternity. So we're in the eternities right now. So knowing that we are in eternity right now, that means I'm not, I don't have to wait for uh, my destiny because I'm living my internals, my eternals and my destinies now because I'm awakening to my now reality, living it out with joy, creating a persona of the atmosphere to be conducive to peace and tranquility and, 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 and challenging and, and loving and grace. Because if I'm doing that, I'm doing the will of the Father. That's what Jesus mentioned. Jesus said, feed the poor, take care of this, do this, because that's eternity. That is eternity. Jesus never said, when you, re when, you, know, when you find that amazing, powerful job one day making uh, you know, six figures, when you, know, when, when, you, when, you, when you learn to prophesy like the big prophets do, you reach your destiny. Think about it. All that is so anti-Christ to what Jesus preached. It's totally anti-Christ because Christ was like, live right now. Live, live the Christ nature in front of people. Take care of the widows. Be, be there for people. Lay hands on the sick and watch them recover. But be there for people. Go take care of the guy who's being up in the street. This is the eternity. This is eternity. This is destiny right here. And that's the kingdom of God, is living right now, because the kingdom of God is nothing futuristic. The kingdom of God is living in me right now. So the eternals is living in me, and it, and it asks me and beckons me to say, why aren't you, Jeremy, matching up and aligning with the eternal part that's inside of you? Because once you did, you will begin to click in, and every moment will be enjoyable in the journey of on, uh, on this powerful life you've been given, right? That's the beautiful thing about the kingdom of God. Thank you so much. I love you too. You're such an awesome per person, Shauna. And that's a key thing we have to begin to move into is what is happening right now is so beautiful and so magnificent. And I can't afford to miss what's happening right now. You know, well, maybe it might be good for you, Jeremy. But it might be good for me because my grandmother passed away or maybe my aunt passed away or we just found out this about maybe somebody getting cancer, somebody dying. Here's what you do. Then you consume this now moment saying, Lord, thank you for the beautiful time I had with my grandmother. All these years and the great memories I made for her. I can shift it, Lord. Does that mean I'm not going to be hurt or upset? Yes. But I'm shifting to say, in this now moment, I can give gratitude for the time I had with them. You know, oh, I find out this, this person's sick. I can believe God for healing for this person and begin to pray and begin to believe total divine health for this person. However, in the midst of that, I will learn to create a new atmosphere of peace where I can create memories with this person now that I heard maybe they're terminally ill while I'm still praying for their healing. You can do that, folks. It's okay. You know, when you look at the kingdom of God as being so extreme to say, I can't think negative. I got to believe God for healing on cancer. I don't have time to spend time with them. I don't have, you know, uh, you know I, I got to be positive. I can't even think the idea of them dying. Well, here's the key thing. Then what's happening, here, here, here's the thing. You're playing Russian roulette because the moment that person, if, 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 if what you pray doesn't happen and that person passes away in two months, you know what you've lost? You've lost life. You've lost two months when you could be spending quality time with them, making memories, loving on them, uh, telling them how much they mean to you, buying them food, being there for them. You've literally missed out on two months. And you might say, well, those two months I was praying in the Spirit, praying in faith for the healing. That, that, that's nice and wonderful, and you should. However, you just lost two months you'll never get back on memory making with that person because you were too religious believing God for healing and yet not doing it not, and, and not believing God for healing and saying, hey, you know what, God? Thy will be done. If it is their time to go to, go to be with you, Lord, then you know what? Praise the Lord. But in the meantime, I can still believe God for healing. I can still, I can still lay hands on him. But I'm also going to say, God, if it's your time, whether it's your time or not, I'm still going to make memories of the person. Why? Because I love that person. I, because I love that person. Love, that's what love, love creates memories. Love creates time. Because it understands how valuable life is. 
Are you with me? I don't know who I'm speaking to today. I believe it's for somebody good on here. Maybe all of us. Amen. Maybe we all need that. And that's the great thing about the kingdom of God is we've got to get off our hyped mode to, to, to feel as if it's either one way or the other, other, other way. I can't be negative, so I've got to think positive. No, let me tell you something. When my and I said this many times. When my father died in 2014, he was a powerful man of God. Loved everyone. He was my best friend. And you know what happened is I didn't take 12 years to say, you know, and everybody kept on saying, you got to continue to take him to meetings. We prayed over and prayed over and prayed over because he had a rare, rare disease. You know, pray over. And I said, wait a minute, hold on, stop. It's easy for you to say because it's not your father. It's easy for me to say, hey, ma'am, you know what? You shouldn't be doing this. No, what's healthier is you say, what do you feel and sense you need to be doing with the person that you love the most in your life? And I'll be praying because, see, when you're weak, I'm supposed to be the strong one bearing forth the weak, which means I should uplift you, not hound you to do your job in the kingdom of God by praying for them. My job, because the Bible says it's the prayers of the elders that save the sick. Hello? So while you should be praying for the person who's going to the, the, the problem with the person they're loving that's dying, it's not on them, it's on you. Hello? If you want to get technical about it. So what we should be doing is giving the person who is saying their, their loved one is sick or, you know, or dying, whatever, we should be giving them the love and say, hey, let me encourage you. Since you're strong, since you're weak right now, let me encourage you and just love on you and, you know, and ask you, you know, how you do and how, you know, are you spending time with them? That, that's a key thing, how we're supposed to live the, the, the power of, of the kingdom of God, not badger the person in prayer. You know, they got enough on them already. Less thing they need is to be badgered with, you know, stand in faith and believe, you know, and you're like, I'm about to pull my hair out, you know, because my loved one's sick, and you're and you're forcing me to to hound me to, you know, stay in faith. And, and I'm sure going, that's not what we do in the kingdom of God. And and truthfully, and truthfully, it's not biblical in the New Testament. Dun dun dun. No, it's not biblical. Paul never said that. Peter never said that. Mary never said that. John never said that. It said, the scripture says basically to stand in faith, believe God. That's what we do. We stand in faith, believe God. In the midst of standing in faith and believing God, we still make memories, we still love, we still give grace, and we say, you know what? I've prayed, been there, done that. I've prayed and believed God. Now I can make time with my, with my loved one. That's, a, that's the kingdom of God, and that's a beautiful thing to where the kingdom of God can be enjoyable. It can be lovable, and we can give the power and the grace of God to all people that way. So creating that atmosphere of peace is inviting us to say, you know what? It's not my job to pressure what's going on in my world. My job is creating atmosphere of peace to where when people are around me and people are, are you know, sick or healthy or joyful or depressed, that I can begin to bring them a safe haven. Call it a sphere of influence if you want, Metron. But my, but I want to create an atmosphere where it's a safe haven for people to be on board with me. I don't want people coming on board with me that maybe are sick saying, that, per that guy is just too strong, you know, high strong on you know, so faith and positive and nothing goes wrong with them, you know, and everything, everything is wrong, I correct it, you know, I, that it makes that person who's sick not want to be on board with you. Think about that. But if you're like, you know what, if you're, if you're positive and believe in God for healing, but you're loving and you're kind, you're gracious, and you're saying, hey, you know what, you know, I love life, life is not perfect for me, you know, uh, sometimes I get sick, sometimes I go through problems, but you know what, it's God's grace, we'll pray, I'll pray. Those are people that, that sick people want to be around, because it's not the hyper faith, it's the people who actually say, you know what, if, if you come in my world, I can just love on you, and I can stand with you in prayer, and I can love on you, and however you feel that day, I can maybe encourage you, just be quiet sometimes and sit with you. I can just hold your hand. We can watch TV together without me preaching to you. Oh my God, you got to get well. You got to get well. And that person's like, I just need you to shut up and just be with me. Okay, I'm not feeling good today. You know, you don't badger somebody who's not feeling good, you know? You know, can you, I mean, somebody who's got cancer, and I don't know who this is for, I'm just going to, this is not what I planned at all, guys. But, you know, somebody who's got cancer and going through chemo, and they're like, their body's weak and they're hurt, the last thing they need is your hyper rear end to go to them and just plug them. Oh my God, you got to get better. You know, I, I, I would probably take my fist and punch your lights out and say, can you just please leave me alone? I'm not feeling good right now. What I need for you to do is stand with me, stand with me in faith, but more importantly, more importantly, there's faith, 
hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. So what I need you to do is get into the greater part of God and sit with me in your love and just be quiet and just hold my hand or just hug me or just watch TV. Just be just be with me. You can still stand in, in agreement with me by faith, but when you're when I'm not feeling good and I'm down or I've got something going on, the last thing I need is to be badgered by your hyper faith. I need love. I need you to create an atmosphere of peace with me because I'm not feeling good or I'm down or I got things going on. I need you just to be. Are you with me? I mean, you know, th th I think sometimes as hyper people, you know, hyper charismatic you know, fear, spiritual of people, I think we lose our luster of love when we when we forget that love is the greatest factor, not faith. And, and, and standing in faith for somebody is powerful, but the most important thing is that of love. God didn't say God is not faith. God is love. And so, and so when someone is upset or down or depressed or sick, you know, what they need is the highest, for, can, I, can I go this route to say these words? They need the highest form of God. <laughs> they need God. They need you to be God to them, which is love and bringing forth and birthing forth that beauty of love is saying, I've got your back. I've got your back. I'm praying for you. We're going to believe God, but what do you want to watch on TV today? You know, they don't need you to go, oh, Susan, you're sick. You know, you're, you're sick. Let's find a scripture for you. Okay, quote this after me, Susan. You're sick. Quote this after me. Say this in Jesus' name. I, w I would probably be, the I would probably punch your lights out. <laughs> I probably would. And you're like, you're a prophet. You're right. And then I would punch your lights out. That's got to forgive me. Because the last thing people need is to be badger. Thank you, Aaron. It's true. You know, you're like, come on, people. What people need is to say, hey, you know what? While we sit here, what can we watch on TV today? And I'll just, I'll just be with you today. And maybe you get your strength up. You know, I can go in the kitchen and make you something to eat. See, it's easy for us to say, oh, I'm going to give you the word of the Lord, brother, while I'm sitting here at your house preaching to you when you got cancer and you got a cold and a flu. See, it's so much easier to blah, blah, blah. But it's harder to say, can I go in the kitchen and make you something to eat? Are you hungry? Do you have any energy? Are you, do you feel the energy maybe to, to you know, to, you need some food right now? Can I go make you something? Can I tell you something, folks? You, you want to you hear something deep? That is the weapon of warfare. Servanthood is the strongest weapon of warfare. Because nobody wants to serve. But we'll be quick to blah, blah, blah. And the Lord said, brother, you got to get healed from that cancer. His word said this. I'd be like... Get out of my face, <laughs> you know? I mean, be his word. Be his scriptures to me by serving me, living out the healing process by being with me, loving me, holding my hand, hugging me. Just, just sometimes just shut your mouth and just be with me as you watch a good movie while I'm going through chemo or while I'm trying to recover from my cold. Or, while my, or, 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 you know, since my husband passed away, my wife passed away, and you're coming to visit me, the last thing you need is to say, well, you know what the Bible says, brother? You know, no. They need you to comfort them and say, you'd let me know if I can do something for you. But, and, but until then, I just want to create an atmosphere of peace for you. Because right now you can just absorb that peace that I'm creating for you in the atmosphere, because that's what you need, right? Because, see, it's harder to create. It's easy to open your big fat mouth. <laughs> can, can you hear me? I'm speaking to me. It's so easy to open your big fat mouth than it is to sit here and just be quiet and be love and be peace and be strength and be comfort. You know, that's what people need. When you create an atmosphere of peace, you'll be the one they'll call next time when something's going on. You're, you'll be, they're not going to call somebody that's going to be like, oh, you know, please, would you shut up? You know what I mean? Because people need love. They need you to live God's word out. If you've got to come to my house, if I'm going through something and, and you're, and you're, and because I'm going through a hard time and I call you and you, if you have to come to my house and you won't shut up and you just like, blah, 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 in the name of Jesus, I do, and I'm going to read the word of God to your body right now. I would honestly, I would, I would say, you know what? You're not creating an atmosphere of peace for you. You're creating distress disturbance and frustration and, and anxiety and you're forcing me to, to to get in your faith when I'm when I'm weak uh, you know because see the, I, the idea is if you're strong and I'm weak the idea is 
I need your strength. And what I need is your strength of, that comes in the wholeness of peace. Because no matter how much you scream at me God's word, it doesn't guarantee me peace. It's not drilling God's word in your, in your heart that's going to give you peace. It's living out the peace of being of having nothing missing, nothing broken, creating the atmosphere for, for somebody to reside in the high tower of that. That's why we go into the high tower of, of God and find safety. He doesn't say, God never says, I'm going to throw my word of God, I'm going to throw my word in your face and preach to you, you know, to get you better. He says, come into the high tower, the strong tower, find refuge in me. Come drink by the living water. As the deer panteth for the water, so my soul longeth after thee. Come to the living waters of peace. This is where God is saying that we're missing it. That's the greatest weapon you have, folks. And so, so, so don't let the hyped movement become your reality. Because when you do, I guarantee you, no one will want to be around you. But people need the gentleness, the compassion, the grace, the atmosphere of peace that you can bring with it. That's a beautiful thing about the God's kingdom. And when you do, you know what? God's going to be right there, definitely. So, you know what? I never, but let me say this before I, I'm going to, I'm going to pray for some of you right now in a minute. I don't know. I just feel like, like I need to pray for some of you. So those, uh, those of you on my team that are with me, just, you know, sort of agree with me in prayer when we pray. But first of all, let me say this, if you don't mind. I want you guys to please, to click on that link above on Instagram, or, you know, for our quick link, uh, and, and, and it's the first link when you click on it, to order or download this book, order it. And, on, and those of you on Facebook, you can go to shop, um, shop our store right there and download it, but you desperately need this. This right here, guys, has saved a lot of people. It has brought a lot of peace to people. So whether you're the carrier of peace or you're the one wanting peace, then do that today. Get this book. Download it today. You'll be glad you. And I give points in there. I give a lot of points of things you can look at and how you can create that and cult cultivate that 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 uh, that foundation of peace in your life. All right. Let's just do this right now. So those of you right now who are who are who are in need of prayer, and maybe this is the route I need to take today. Man, I was all about you know. Hey, let me give you some points of meditate and spend time in nature and take responsibility. I was going to tell you some different points, and literally God shifted me into this place of like. What's going on, God? What am I saying? You know, and so I want that to be a part of our reality today. So those of you right now, Angela, Diane, uh, you know, uh, all those, Pamela, all those right now with me today, you know, let's just go ahead and pray right now for all those who need it. Amen. So, so Father God, right now, I just pray for all those right now, Lord, who are hurting, um, hurting in heart, uh, hurting in body. I, hurting in mind. Father, I just pray right now, Lord, that you'll begin to just bless every person. That you'll begin to cultivate the atmosphere of peace. You are the Prince of Peace, Father. You never wanted us to be able to, to you, you, don't, you don't shove it down our throats, Father. So I pray right now, Father, in Jesus' name, that you'll begin to be that peace to us right now and begin to give us the strength we need. Those of you who are depressed and down and maybe just feel worried or maybe anxious or maybe you feel as if something is just uh, maybe not feeling kosher today about you. You know what, Father? I just pray you begin to just give them that blanket of love and peace and compassion and just, just cradle them, Father, and let them know, Father God, that yes, joy comes in the morning, but let them know, Father God, that everything's going to be okay. Let them know that everything is going to be okay, that, Lord, there's a, part, a point in our lives when we can look back and say, God really brought me through that. So, Father, right now, just bring that peace to people. Bring that nurturing right now to people. Lord, love on people right now. Lord, it's not about your faith. It's not about anything else, but it's about your loving grace, your loving kindness, Father. So, Father, right now, I speak to all those who are sick, who got negative reports. I speak to all those who are empty nesters, those who feel alone, those who have nobody, those who maybe feel as if, you know, um, I'm not complete unless I have somebody in my life. You know, Lord, first of all, break down that misconception. Break down that, 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 that the thing that, this, that we have Americanized so much, Father, of, of being that if you don't do this, you're, not, you're a nobody. If you're not married with kids, you're a nobody. Father, break all that ridiculous stuff that our culture has presented to these people. And Father, I pray that we learn to find strength in you, Feel confident in you. Feel comfortable in you. Know that our wholeness doesn't rely on what we have or who we have in our lives or how many kids we have. It relies on knowing you, Father. So, Lord, be that today to everyone who needs you. And I thank you that your word is true. It says those who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Lord, let your grace uh, be present to all those right now who just say, God, I just need you. It's not the eloquence of words. It's not, oh, Lord, I pray. Lord, skip all that religious junk. Lord, today you just said those who 
You just say, God, I just need you right now. That you'd be faithful and you'd be true to all those, Lord, who just say your name. So, Father, let it be done right now. And I thank you today, Father, that, Lord, your power and your presence would be um, strong to those who are weak right now, Father. And we just speak as of this moment that all is going to be well and that everything will shift even today as we get off this this uh, this live, that everything will begin to shift. And Lord, it's not so much of I need you outside of me. Lord, you're always our ever-present help in time of trouble. You are with me right now and you're in me. So those of you right now that feel you're alone or feel like God is somewhere out there, just know he's not. He's not even just around you or beside you. He is in you. I want you just to take that moment of just absorbing that, that understanding, that knowledge that God is already in me. I don't have to ask him to come in me. He's already in me. And I just got to absorb that knowledge of just, thank you, God. You're already taking care of problems. You're already in me. You're already living through me. And that's all I need to know. That's all I need to know. So, Father, do that today, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen, amen. You guys are amazing. You really are. And please, as always, you know, if you want to support me, hey, Instagram people, folks, buy a badge. We need that because you feed finances into our missions fund, and that's what we need. We need it. I'm actually going to start this new thing here soon. You guys are going to hear me talk about it soon. I'm excited, you know, so you guys are praying that whatever it is God wants me to do, we're going to join in and we're going to watch it explode. But if you want to support me, buy some badges on Instagram. Go donate on, on Facebook if you want to. Uh, buy the book, both, both of you, all of you, Facebook, Facebook and Instagram. You know, buy the book. Download the book today. I would love people to, to get off these lives and see orders coming in for people who need these books. And so buy for somebody who needs it. I'll tell you the truth. Those of, those of you that maybe have friends that are sick or, or dying or, or alone, you know, this is a great tool right here. Honestly, I'm not trying to say it's a great tool because people need to realize that we can create, we can create and cultivate peace around us in the midst of the storm. And, and so, you know, buy the book for somebody. I'd be glad to autograph it. I have no problem. I'd love to autograph it for them. But do that today. I love every one of you. Have a blessed, wonderful, dynamic, magnificent day today. Know how much you're loved. Know how much that there's a difference between being lonely and alone. There's totally difference here. You can be alone without being without being lonely. And and knowing that you're going maybe through a hard time, an emotional struggle, maybe you feel down and sort of like blah. Let me tell you something. Your life is going to get better. One of the things I've realized in my life is when 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 we go through hard times of being down or depressed or or whatever you know the the thing that the enemy loves to stop us about is knowing things are going to get better think about that when you're going through a hard time or you're depressed isn't it true that you you think like nothing it's never going to improve nothing's going to happen it's never going to get better i don't want to do anything that's because the enemy loves to take away your future he loves to take away that next moment of reality that says i'm hungry i could call a friend I want to watch a movie. Think about that. I want to read God's word. I want to pray. I, I want to go to church. I want to go shopping. I, I want to, you know, uh, I want to go clean up. I, I want to go clean my bathroom. You know, think about it. any moment past that moment of depression is not there. And that's what keeps us in our hell moment because we find ourselves saying, I just don't want to do anything. But I, what I want you to do today is this is I want you to say, you know what? I don't go by what I feel or see. And if I feel right now, I don't know who I'm talking to, but this is for somebody. If I feel right now that like, you know, I'm just, I just don't have any passion for anything right now, Jeremy. I don't feel like I just want to even do anything. I don't feel like I even want to get out of bed. I don't, I don't even want to like go cook. I don't want to, God, last thing I want to do is talk to someone on the phone or go shopping, you know, whatever, or, or go to a movie. I just don't want to do that. Let me tell you something. You don't have to feel that. You don't have to feel as if, you know, but I, should I feel that? If you don't feel it, it's okay. It's perfectly okay. Give yourself the permission to say, it's okay that I don't feel that. However, however, just know, just know the greatest lie of depression is that symptom. And, because, and that symptom is feeling like I just don't want to do anything, nor do I even care What's going to happen in five minutes from now? That's 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 the lie of depression. And so because of that, what you've got to do today is you've got to say, you know what? I might not feel it, but I'm going to get out of this bed and I'm going to start cleaning. I might not feel like I want to go shopping, but I'm going to get out of the house into the sunlight 
which is known to give you vitamin C and D, you know, to get out of the house and to force myself to buy me a new shirt, buy me a new outfit, buy me new shoes, buy me a new dress, buy me a new, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to make myself. And the reason why you might say, but I don't feel like it, Jeremy. Hey, there's times I don't feel like praying. There's times I don't feel like, you know, um, wanting to eat. There's times I don't feel like I want to clean. There's times I don't feel like I want to just, I just want to be like, blah, <laughs> you know what I mean? And yet, but yet, you, you know what you do? Is you find yourself saying, but I know there's something in me that I just know that I know that I know if I just got out of bed, if I just walked outside the sun, if I just went shopping, if I just, you know, went to go visit my, my grandmother, if I just went over to, you know, visit my sister, if I just got out and just did something, anything, something, that I know that something in me could, could possibly click. And maybe it might open that small door of saying, this feels okay. This feels good. I, 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 I'm feeling something. And if you have to do that every day, do it. I don't know who I'm speaking to today. But you know what? If you feel you can't move, make yourself move. Make yourself just go sit outside, spread your arms open, put your sunglasses on, you sit in the chair and just look up to the sun, let that, let that, the warmth of the sun just invade your space and just say, ah, oh, I'm outside. Let me just feel the air for a moment. Let me hear the birds chirping. Let me just feel the sunlight as it warms my body. Because let me tell you something. The main thing you've got to know is being down and depressed, it wants you to feel isolated, not doing anything, don't move, and by all means, don't step out that front door. So defy the odds today and just say, I'm taking the first step. The first step to just take, get outside. And the first step to say, I can take a deep breath. The first step to say, I can hear the birds chirping. The first step to say, I'm going to walk out and go to the mall. Even though I don't want to be there, I can't stand going there. I'm going to, I'm going to do it today. Take the first step that you can and watch God honor the rest of it for you. All right. Love every one of you. You guys are so amazing. And I'll close with this. First of all, share, 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 share all this. Uh, put comments in after we get all, go off life, the algorithms to pick them up. Um, um, share this with people you might know. Buy the book for somebody who needs it. Uh, also, I'll announce my monthly live, which is on Wednesday night. Soon, it's usually the third weekend. Oh, excuse me, the third week, Wednesday of the month. I'll let you, I'll let you know about that soon. Um, don't forget my podcast, so Wednesday's Thoughts Become Things by Jeremy Lopez. Uh, get your prophetic word today. I'm doing word today. Hello, hello, hello. I was going to say hello, hello, and hallelujah. So, yeah, that's my new word for the day. But definitely do that. I love every one of you. Have a blessed, wonderful day. Know how much you're loved. For goodness sake, you are so loved today. All right? I'll talk to you guys soon. God bless.